what can you say about leadership, leadership particularly when you were in the uh, Congo Valley at the outpost? Um, because it, it, you know, you talk a lot about um, how the soldiers and the, and the commonality, the brotherhood, but within that dynamic, what was the role of leadership and what was effective or not effective that you witnessed? Uh, I think the effective leadership um, partly was the result of the leaders demonstrating that they're willing to under, undergo the same level of risk as the men that they command. It was, and I keep saying men, it was all men out there. There were no, there were no women in the Korangal when I was there in, in uniform. At one point, we were on a very messed up operation, and we were on the, we were on the Gadigal Spur, where first platoon got ambushed. And they got, you know, radio, they intercepted radio communication from the Taliban that they were gonna hit us uh, from both sides. So they had guns pointing, we were on the top of this ridge and there was no correct side to get on to take cover because they were on either side of us and we were completely screwed. And fortunately some air power showed up and sort of saved us. But before that happens, I mean it was a very, everyone was out of water, they were drinking the uh, fluid in their IV bags because they were, um, sort of hallucinating from uh, dehydration, and it was very, very bad. And, and the, the, the lieutenant, Lieutenant Piosa, stood up to sort of figure out where his men were and where he wanted to put them to try to salvage this situation. And Sergeant Rice, you know, Piosa's 23, Sergeant Rice is 25. Sergeant Rice stood up and said, and enlist, Rice enlisted, Piosa, officer, uh, said, sir, sit down, take cover, it's my job to get shot at, it's your job to lead the men. I don't think he would have said that, we wouldn't have needed to, but I think he wouldn't have said that to a leader who he, he thought would not, was not willing to take those same risks or even greater risks. And there, you know, there's the, the next Lieutenant Gillespie was, you know, they had kept having to pull him down in firefights. You know, like, get down, take cover, you're gonna get hit. It is a corporate equivalent that unfortunately doesn't happen very often, but I, you know, I think effective leadership is basically saying to your men, if bad stuff happens to us, it's gonna to happen to me first. And I will, and in exchange, I hope you will trust my, my judgment and, lead, and follow me anywhere. Did you see bad leadership while you were there? They didn't put, where, where I was was so bad, they didn't put bad leaders out there. <laughs> During your whole time when you were embedded with American forces, you never saw bad leadership, you would say? No, I mean, look, combat is complex and complicated, and you're getting orders from above, and you know, decisions get made that don't sound like they make sense, and they look like bad leadership. You're not seeing the whole chessboard, and the thing is that what's, what you're doing is not about you. I mean, you put a platoon on that hill because there's, another, there's a company position over here, and there's a battalion position over there, and like, it really isn't about you, right? So what you're doing might look incredibly stupid and look like bad leadership, but actually you don't matter. Like what matters is the chess game. And so I, I, I just don't have access to that information to really judge it.